Never let the computer know when a meeting is critical or you're in a hurry. That's like muttering the Q word. It's just not done, it's poor form. Let's talk about technology and the virtual interview. How can you be best prepared to do the best job possible when interviewing over technology? So when you're talking about a virtual interview, there are a lot of technology issues. What technology do you need? What hardware, what software, what platforms? How do you prepare and what apps are you gonna to use to do the best job possible? If you wanna think about setting the stage for the virtual interview and getting your computer ready, watch Lisa Cardello's section on setting the stage. She does a great job of reviewing what you need to do. When we talk about the technology, the most important question is gonna be what platform are they going to use to do the interview? A platform is just a collection of programs put together to create a system to get something done. So if you're talking about a virtual interview, a lot of programs will use Zoom. A lot of programs will use WebEx. Um, Microsoft Teams is another common one. Skype, GoToMeeting, FaceTime are all potential platforms that you may have used once or twice, you may be familiar with. You may think you're comfortable with it, but do they have a tutorial? Can you get better? One of the things that we differentiate between college and graduate school is college makes you aware of what's going on within a field. Graduate school holds you responsible for the details. You're a physician now. You're interviewing for a job as a physician. Know how the platform works, how to use it to its maximal benefit, and how not to get into trouble. So do the tutorial. Be on the platform before the interview. Be ready for glitches and changes, modifications, things you may do to make sure it works best. Because there will be some speed bumps anytime you use technology. The most common thing we see is people getting emails during their interview where it just comes along the side and they say, do you want a shirt for 20 bucks? Do you need um, a pill? Do you want to get involved with this organization? Those are things you want to avoid. If you can take the pop-up blockers out, you'll keep the conversation focused on what matters. If there are filters that are gonna stop people from coming in, stop the comments from occurring, get rid of them. Did you have trouble with your platform freezing? Do you get your voice across or does it cause problems at times? Be aware of this. If you're dropping signals or your meeting isn't smooth, Figure that out beforehand. Maybe warn the person you're interviewing with if you can't fix it. And if you can fix it, fix it. Some of the other common things are people often jump on their interview with five or 10 minutes um, leeway. And they don't close at all their apps. They don't clean up their desktop. They don't get things ready for the interview. They just do the interview. If you have any open tabs that you want to share, make sure they're open. Practice with your sharing a screen. If there are things you need to do to make it smoother, do it beforehand. You don't want to have people watch you go through that system. The basic technology for a virtual interview can be a computer, an iPad, or an iPhone. And there are things that Lisa talks about, such as having the camera at eye level. If it's at eye level, it looks better, it looks more professional, and it looks like you're talking to a peer. If it's coming from the bottom, that's an issue. So watch Lisa Cardello's video to get an idea. An advanced technology platform, an advanced technology um, requirements would be a web camera that's at eye level, a microphone that makes your voice sound better and clearer. And if you need earpieces or bone pieces or something to make sure that the sound is clear to you and shared well, that can be helpful. But those are advanced, not necessary, but can help you. The gas that runs the engine is the internet. Have you had internet issues? Do you have issues with bandwidth? Does the room have an issue? Does the location have an issue? Those are all questions you should be aware of beforehand. If there are things you can do to maximize your bandwidth, prevent problems, do it before the interview starts. In terms of setting the stage, we're seeing a lot of people who feel that their cell phones work better than their computers and they'll hold their cell phones up so that they can see it at eye level. The problem is your interview can be 30 minutes 45 minutes, an hour, and holding it starts to get a little bit unsteady. You wanna watch out for that. The background, as Lisa talks about, the professional background is important, not distant, distracting, 
And if you don't have a green screen and you aren't prepared to have something behind you, don't. And look at her comments on angle and light also so that you can do the best you can. So one of the big questions we get is what programs or apps should we use to make sure we're ready for our virtual interview and for the virtual interview season? And the best answer is a spreadsheet that's kept up to date, a spreadsheet that's on your desktop, a spreadsheet that gets updated every time you get an email or a communication is the best way to do it. We all love a good GUI, a good graphic user interface that makes it look simple, that gives you the box, that focuses on what needs to be input. And that's good too, but that costs money, takes time and is another thing to learn. The apps that everybody needs to know are, first of all, for the residency search. Frida is probably the most common. Residency Explorer is another one that the AMC puts out that's also um, well used and effective. Doximity is another one. And those are really how you get started. But once you decide what specialty you're going into, the specialty specific apps are going to be the strongest. They're the ones that are updated the most frequently and give you the best information. The other thing you should be prepared for is in this unique residency application season, residency fairs are virtual. Instagram has become the go-to place for learning about residencies. And a lot of residencies are putting out Instagram videos on a day in the life of a resident or a virtual open house. And these are replacing the dinner with the residents that really were the mainstay for getting a feel for what the residencies were like. But since you can't travel, since you can't get there, you've got to do it in other ways. And one thing we know in medicine is everything that we do can be done differently. That's been reinforced by the pandemic. Not only can it be done differently, it will be done differently. And it's in your best interest to adapt, to learn, to find the new ways and find the effective ways. So Instagram is a good one to look at. In terms of searching for programs, these are some links for programs with osteopathic recognition and programs that have transitioned from an AOA program to an ACGME program. These are programs that are gonna be DO friendly, that are gonna know your college, know your training, and you're gonna have less explaining to do because they've said they want DO applicants. They wanna complete the DO training and they wanna make sure their residents practice with the osteopathic programs. Once you've gotten your applications in and you start getting your interviews, a lot of people will use interview schedulers. IRIS has an interview scheduler on the IRIS website. The NRMP has the match prism. A lot of people use Thalamus GME or Interview Broker, and those are private companies that provide the software on your phone, on your iPad, and other ways for you to track your interviews and respond quickly when you get interview requests. Other program apps to be aware of, um, most osteopathic medical schools will have big interview medical provided to them, at least for the next year. If you check out that app, it's got some good resources to use and good ability to manage your application, manage your virtual interview, and give you additional tips. There are other companies such as Match Resident, Med School Insiders, um, that also provide information. And again, nothing wrong with doing this yourself and doing the search on Google and keeping it within an Excel spreadsheet. Another thing to bring up is social media has really been critical for sharing information. Instagram has been the top site I've seen, but Twitter has been very, very active with a lot of program directors learning to use Twitter this year and tweeting out information about their residents and their residency, what they're looking for and what they want people to know about their residency program itself. To a lesser extent, Student Doctrine Network and Reddit are not um, as accurate and have have been used quite a bit, but with variable levels of accountability. And um, it is out there and it is used. So this year is going to be a unique year for residency interviews. You are not able to travel to the sites to see them. And most of the programs are learning to use virtual interviews as a way of saving time and money. It's also interesting that some are even going back to the, going back to the next best thing to being there, the telephone. 
saying, if we want to do a good interview where we know about your qualifications and know about who you are, maybe we don't need the video. Maybe we could do it by telephone. But be ready, be flexible, be prepared, and good luck. Enjoy the experience. Thank you.